Welcome to The Voice of Jesus. My name is Randolph Kubitschek, and I'm going to be starting a series called The Daily Challenge. And it's going to be a daily challenge for every single one of us. Uh, I've done this challenge for the last two months when I was in Australia. And what really helped me was a lady by the name of Dr. Caroline Leaf. She wrote a book, Switch on Your Brain. And I did this program, it was for 21 days, and I did it twice. I saw great improvement. There was, a, there was a process of change constantly every day as I started to focus on these areas in my life. And as a Christian, we've been taught a lot of spiritual things, but we have to realize that as a Christian, when you became born again, your spirit became perfect. You cannot improve on that. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Where the problem lies is in our soulish realm, in our emotions, in our will, in our thoughts, in our desires. And I have written down, which I'll probably get in a document form, put it on the, on the web, uh, what this challenge is about and how we can apply this challenge every day in our life. Now, there's a lot of things that we have to understand. Is that there's, uh, In Christianity, there, we have some practical and, and some not so practical in the sense like physical. You know, we see in other religions, they have meditation, they have all these other uh, things, I don't know what they, or yoga or whatever. But I learned one thing from this lady, and now she's a Christian scientist, and she's very good. You can look her up on the web, Dr. Caroline Leaf. And she first starts with just breathing, just to relax. And what she says is just to, you've got your sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, nervous system, which when we start to breathe, when we breathe from our diaphragm, it just calms you down. And that's what a lot of people need. They just need to relax. They need to calm down. I remember when I was in, um, I had uh, surgery on my on top of my head. I had this little lump on the top of my head. And the doctor, while he was operating, he cut it open. And he, I could feel him pushing this, this little lump out of my head. And um, he said, I'm almost there. And I got it. And he took the thing out and he started to show me. And I felt wheezy. I thought, Doc, I don't feel too good. So they raised my head, raised my legs. He said, just breathe. Now I want you to breathe deep, in, out, in, out, three times. And I was perfect. So I know breathing does help. So the first thing I want to do is, is as our daily challenge begins in day one, is I want to teach you just to breathe. And it's a very simple thing, just to relax. It's just three in, expand your stomach, three hold, and three out. And do that a few times, three, four, five times. And just, to, and just relax. And make sure your shoulders are relaxed and everything. I found in my own life I became very stressful and very tense. And my shoulders became tense. My gut was tense. And I started becoming aware of these signals. And I thought, what's going on? Now, we prayer is wonderful. The word is wonderful. We can cast all our cares upon the Lord. But let me say this. You can cast all your cares upon the Lord. But you can still live, a, live an unhealthy lifestyle. You can still eat the wrong food. You can still just sit around the couch and not exercise. You can still do things that's causing stress in your life. That ain't going to help you spiritualize. Now, number one is, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we are being commanded to look after it. The body's not your own, the Bible says. The body belongs to the Lord. And we need to be good stewards of this body to look after it. Too many people today are just sitting around watching their iPhones, eating the wrong foods, not exercising, living under stress, and they're going to reap what they sow. And God says, he says, that what a man soweth, he shall also reap. So we have to understand there's a sowing, a reaping process. And number two, once we've just got our breathing, when we're relaxed, we're sitting in a nice posture, gather your thoughts. Um... You know, I'm going through a very stressful time in my life at the moment. Now, there's a lot of things going on that I have to start to gather my thoughts. And when I came back from Australia, I was great. For three weeks, everything was perfect. I, I felt that, that that process I did was great. But when stress and these other events and circumstances and problems started to impact my life together, it caused a lot of stress. And I thought to myself, Lord, what do I need to do? And I sat down and I ran through all my notes. And yesterday as I was sitting at my desk, I was just reading constantly all through my notes. And I started to take all these notes once again on a daily basis. So what I need to do is I need to be refocused. But what 
if you haven't ever done a program like this for self mental care, you need to start to focus. The thing is, is focusing not on the negative but on the positive, having a right attitude. Because it's your attitude that will determine the quality of your life, not your DNA, not who your parents are, not the money you have, not the place you live, but you. If you have a bad neg a negative attitude, that will carry out through the rest of your life in relationships, in your, in your job, and also in your body and your spiritual walk with the Lord. Now, I wrote down a verse, and I like writing down a Bible verse, and if you're not used to that, get a pen and paper and start writing down a Bible verse. And so what I do is I, get, I find the verse, and I just be led by the Holy Spirit, and I write out the verse, and I try to memorize that verse. So I wrote down here from Mark eleven twenty two to 24, which is a very applicable verse for what we're going to be talking about. And it says here, For surely I say to you, whoever says to the mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that the things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Now, verse 30, 24. Therefore I say to you, Whoever says to these things, or sorry, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, when you pray, believe that you have received them and you shall have them. Now, prayer is a dialogue, is that we can also hear from the Father. God wants to hear our request. He wants to hear our supplications. You know, the Bible verse in Philippians 4, chapter, uh, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 6, which is, do not be anxious for anything. But through prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, make your request be known unto God, that he would guard you through your mind and your heart through Christ Jesus. Now, we have to understand a lot of our problems are in our mind. We have physical problems, which probably more, some, more than likely is caused because of our bad attitudes, because of our mind. They say that 98% um, of illnesses are stress-related. They're psychosomatic. In other words, as you've been thinking is what you become. As a man thinketh, that she, so shall he become. That's in the old King James, Proverbs 23, 7. Now, we have to get our minds right. And we need to do it on a daily basis. It's a, it's a daily challenge to conquer the mind. Once we've conquered the mind, we can conquer everything else because the mind is the most powerful thing that we have in this universe, after God. And God created that mind. And God wanted us to be, have a creative mind, to have creative thinking, for us to start to walk in the way that He says we should walk. Not in the way that we should walk or the world walks. We're not to be conformed to this world, but the renewing of our mind, Romans 12, 2. So I want you to think of that. Now, in that verse, I want to look at from the, the back end of that verse. It talks about faith. Now, in faith, there is no fear, no doubt, no unbelief, no worry, no anxiety, no pain, and no failure. In faith. Anything else that is not a faith, the Bible says, uh, Romans 14, 26, or 23 or 26, it says that what is not a faith is sin. Now, we have to understand anything that we not do of faith is going to be sin. Now, we all fall short. We all fall short. We all get into a rut. We all get pressured by the influences and the, the pressures of this world and, and we know the devil's behind our back as well. But we can decide how we're, going to, how we're going to adopt. We can decide, we can make that choice how we can be depressed or happy, um, strong or weak, successful or a failure. And let me tell you this, God wired us for success. God wired us for love. God wired us to walk according to his ways. Do we always do it? It is a challenge. That's what I'm saying. This is a challenge. I think what has really helped me is sometimes is just sit back and evaluate. And we're going to be talking about that uh, today. So I, I would suggest if you, if you have a pen and paper, take notes. Uh, number one, we talk about breathing. Just get that breathing just a few times here and there. Um, gather your thoughts together. Don't focus on the problems. Focus on the answer. Jesus is the answer. He's worth the answer. Get into a verse. Pick a verse during the day. That day when you wake up, just pick a verse and meditate on that verse. 
Okay. Uh, another factor is that we need to acknowledge the toxic thoughts that are in our life. The primary thing that's keeping us down and not moving us forward is our toxic thinking. Now, there is a lot of toxic thinking out there. You can be around toxic people and it's not hard for you to catch that toxicity because those people are going to bring something on your life. They, 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 there's an influence, there's an impact, especially if it's, if it's people you work with or in the family or, or your loved one or whatever the case is. It can, can be quite contagious. But you can make a choice. It's not what you hear, but how you hear it. And I was listening to Dr. Caroline Leaf the other day and she was uh, having this great program. She's an amazing woman. And uh, to God be all the glory for this woman. But she says how to deal with, with, um, with difficult people. And she said one thing that really struck me. She said, behind every message, there's a deeper message. People try to uh, relay their message to us, but we can't relate to them because we really don't know what the deeper message is. There's something there, a root cause, that causes these problems to come out. And there could be many, many different reasons as to why. So, I wrote down on my things here, and I said, acknowledge toxic thoughts. Now, things that have to go is disappointment. If you've been disappointed, and we all have been disappointed, dealing with disappointment is sometimes difficult, especially when it's from a loved one. You can get frustrated. That has to go then you can become angry. And you can become angry at yourself too because sometimes you're the blame. You know, we can blame ourselves. We can, we can put a lot of blame on ourselves for a lot of things that's happened in our lives. We like to blame others, which is so much easier and more comfortable. Uh, but then again, we feel, we feel more secure that way, but it's a lot of insecurity in our life that's being displayed. Another one is pride. Um, pride is one of the most worst things. Uh, you know, I, I can see we were discussing with a sister that hmm, if God made Lucifer perfect, how can he have had pride in his life? And I just thought to myself, this was a very good question. Well, you see, he was perfect. He was beautiful. He was the bright and morning star. He was the leader of worship in heaven. That he thought to himself he could be higher than God. And he could do better than God. And he had no creative power. It was just pride that led him. And pride comes before destruction. And this is where we all have to be careful with pride. God cannot show his grace to us when there's pride in our lives. Uh, I'm going to deal with that a little bit later on in, as we go along these series about pride. But we all have to deal with it. Um, and there's different, there's different facets of pride too. Um, so we'll, we'll go, also go into that. Sickness. Mental sickness, uh, physical sickness, emotional sickness, they are not of God. God is not the author of sickness. Sickness comes, sure they come. But uh, this, here's the question. Um, well, let's, let's, let's start with this. Sickness is not of God, it's of the devil. Otherwise, in Acts 10.38, when it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with power and the Holy Ghost, going about healing all who were oppressed of the devil and doing good because God was with him. Now, I can see that Jesus didn't want sickness in people's life. Jesus didn't want people to be depressed and oppressed. People, Jesus didn't want them to be in pain. Everyone who came to Jesus, he healed. Every single one of them. And you can be healed when we come to him. You know, in um, James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, it says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. There are some conditions there. If we want God to draw near to us, we've got to draw near to him. And I, and I, I say this um, uh, in a way where it's not like we do our religious duties. I believe drawing to God is just separating yourself from the things of this world, even from people at times, and seek God. Because that's what I did. When I was in Australia for four and a half months, I, I had a very tight schedule, a very hard schedule. We're, we're, I was doing a lot of different things there. And I'd draw myself away. I'd go into the beach. I'd go for a walk on the beach early in the morning or in the evening or on a bike ride. And I'd just look at the ocean and I'd speak to God. And I'd draw myself closer to Him. And I'd feel His presence drawing closer to me. There's a time of separation. 
And that's what we need to do. Um, draw. Jesus went. Jesus prayed through the night. He he drew withdrew himself to the mountain, and he prayed all night. He wanted to just be with the Father. That's what we need to do. Just get back to the Father. So those things have to go. Things that have to come and stay in our life, and you can declare that you already have because Jesus made sure that we did have that, is success in your life. A successful life in your health, in your marriage, in your work, in your finance, in your children, in every area of your life. And it is a challenge. I'm not saying it's going to come easy. Nothing's going to come easy in life. Everything's going to be a challenge. But through faith in Him and His work at the cross, we can say, you know what? I'm already a success. I'm already a conqueror in Christ. I have His peace. I have His joy. I have humility. Because if you didn't have humility, you wouldn't have His grace in your life. God does not give grace to the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. So think that I received God's grace in my life because I was humble. Humble enough to receive that I was wrong, I was a sinner, and I needed help. And that's if you're out there today and you're thinking to yourself, you know what, nothing's working for me. Well, now's the day and the time and the hour to say, I better humble myself. I better ask God to help me. And God will help you if you humble yourself. Call on His name. Just call on the name of Jesus. Jesus, help me. Save me. He's the type of God that would come. And I can give you countless and countless of testimonies, even of my own life, of how the goodness and the grace of God has always come and has never let us down. You have health. Jesus paid at the same time on Calvary's cross for our sins. He paid for our, our sicknesses to give us health. He said, he said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. Now, living in abundance in, this, in life you need to be healthy too. You just don't have to have an abundance of money. What about an abundance of friends, abundance of wealth of knowledge, um, of communication skill, whatever? God wants to give us good mental health, the way we think. And I think the last one, which should be number one, is love. We do have his love. Remember this, it's love conquers all. Love believes all, love's hope all, love bears all, love endures all. Love is the greatest. And that is a challenge each and every day to love our enemies. Ever had to love an enemy? Ever people you've despised, people who've done you wrong and you need to love and pray for them? I had people do some really bad things to me, but I've learned to pray and I've learned to bless. And another thing I've had to start to learn is, to, is sometimes you've just got to shut your mouth. <laughs> I mean, seriously, don't say what you think. Um, think before you talk. Even the Bible talks that in, I think it's Ecclesiastes chapter 5. It says, um, uh, speak slowly, uh, listen, listen quickly and speak slowly. I, and, don't, and don't make quick vows unto God. There are some wisdoms in those things that we need to apply on a daily basis. So what I'm trying to say is here is that we're going to go through this daily challenge. We're going to look at ourselves. We're going to have an inventory in our lives, look in the mirror, and say, look, I'm going to have a no-kid-myself day. These are areas in my life I need to deal with. People have told you, you know about it. When you read the Word, you're reading about yourself. Because it's saying, uh -uh, that's not really me, is it? I need to change. So, we are wired for love and we're wired for success. And we're wired to, have, to be great in Him. There's greatness in us because He's in us. I, I want you to just get that carefully. He's in us, with us, for us. So we can do great things for Him, back to Him. God doesn't want any... He hasn't he didn't made any B-class uh, children. We're all A-class a, a children in His sight. Okay. Try always to be in a calm state in your thoughts, in your words, in your actions. Um, there was one thing that really helped me, uh, and we have to practice it. It's a, it's a daily challenge. It's in um, Proverbs 15, verse 1, and it says, um, a, a, gentle answer, you know, a gentle answer turns away wrath. I think that's what, it's, what it says, a gentle answer. Well, let, me, let me just get it right for you here. I'll, I'll read from the uh, New King James. But this is good. Yeah, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledgely rightly, 
but the mouth of the fools pours out foolishness. So a soft answer turns away wrath. So it starts from there. Your thoughts need to be, be in a calm state of mind. Today, I'm going to learn to be in a calm state of mind. When I'm in a calm state of mind, my words will come out calm and peacefully. My actions will be calm and peacefully. Why? Because God is with me. And the second one is, and this one helps, this number two helps number one. Learn to depend on the Holy Spirit. Learn to speak to the Holy Spirit. Learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. How many a times have we made foolish mistakes, done foolish things for the simple reason we did not listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit first? And we could have saved ourselves so much heartache, pain, time, trouble, money, whatever the case is. Learn to listen. Lord, what do I need to do? How do I need to react? What do I need to say? And God might just say, don't say anything. God says to me sometimes, shut up. Don't say anything. So learn to depend on that. Learn to talk to him more and more. Another one is number three in this area is um, your awareness of yourself. Um, why am I like this? And, and this is, this is a, a question I had to ask myself constantly. Why am I feeling like this? I, I, I'm, I'm looking at these, uh, these emotional uh, warning signals in my life. Why do I feel tense? Why do I feel uneasy and, 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 and uh, moody? What, why do I feel like that? And what I learned from Dr. Caroline was that I had to ask myself the question. I had to answer myself that question. And I had to discuss that uh, question within myself. And I'll tell you one thing. When I started to ask, answer, and discuss that within myself, it was an own therapy. I, I see that talking to yourself is a therapy. Writing things down on a piece of paper is a therapy. And you'll see the marvels it will do. Learn to have a diary. I've got many diaries. i got my, my project book. I've got my diary. I've got another diary. I, I learn to write things down. I like writing. I like to just sit down and read, and I write. Every day I write. And it's really been a blessing to me. Now, another thing is, is to reflect and analyze the problem. Now, reflection and analyzation of the problem should always be to be in a solution-solving mo mode. That you are, you are solving that problem and you are solving it prayerfully. That means you, you, you pray about it. You go into God's Word. You seek advice from people, people you love, people who you know, people you can trust. And you reflect and analyze it. They might put some input in your life. God might speak to you about that stuff. Hey, listen, that's what you should not be doing. And these are the things you should be doing. Now, we haven't got much time, but I wrote some things down this morning. And these were just my own thoughts about challenging for day one. Now, here's the, these are these are worth to write down. Number one, I wrote, be thankful and be grateful. You know what we should be thankful and grateful for? We serve a good God. We, 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 if you're a born-again Christian, you know you're bound for eternity with, to be with Jesus Christ forever without any pain, suffering, or trouble from in this world. And just be thankful. Just be thankful that you've got a roof over your head, you've got clothes on your back, you've got food in the fridge. Just be grateful. Just be thankful for every, the smallest little things. Even somebody let you in, 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 in uh, when you're in traffic and they let you in. Just be thankful for that. Be thankful for the little things in life and be grateful for it. Number two, be great in all you do. Do the best you can. You have good, better, and the best. Always do your best. And always learn to be great and, and the best what you can do. Even if, it's, even if it's cleaning toilets, be the best toilet cleaner you are. Whatever it is, take pride in what you do. Be the best you're at it. Number three is enjoy your life. Learn to enjoy life. Learn to go out. You know, I was out on the, I go mostly nearly every day in the forest on, on my bike. I've got a mountain bike and I'm out there and I had a bit of a spill the other day and I was in quite a lot of pain, twisted a little bit of my knee. But I lied there in the forest. And as I looked up and I saw the trees and I saw the sun shining through the trees and, and the birds uh, chippering and, and I thought, man, this is beautiful from this, this. I never seen the, the forest like that before from the ground up. 
I started just to just to worship and thank God. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Command this pain to go. I started just enjoying, even when I was in pain, I just started enjoying life. Just learn to enjoy. Find something that you can see brings happiness and joy. Do it. Learn to love more. Now, that's a challenge. Um, we can all love more. Come on. Every single one of us can love our spouse more, our children more, our friends more, our enemies more. And I think that's where grace comes in. Because when grace comes in, love will follow grace, always. That's how we receive the love of God in our life, because we received His grace into our life. So learn to love more and stop being offended. We take offense for any little thing. You notice somebody says something, even they, they look at you bad. You take a, how can you look at me like that? Just smile. You know, listen, just smile. Just learn to laugh. Learn to smile at things. I mean, if you don't, if, look, if you don't do it, those things get to you. You need to take a stance before, you need to get to that on top of that before that gets on top of you. Okay? You're the, you're the head and not the tail. Amen? Learn to be humble. Now, I think humility is great. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying being religious. I'm just saying be humble. If you're wrong, say you're wrong. If you need to say sorry, say you're sorry. If you need to ask somebody to forgive you, tell them to think, forgive me. I'm wrong. Be humble. That's what God loves. God loves the humble. Okay? Um, if, my, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I shall hear from heaven and I shall heal their land. In other words, he'll heal your heart. That's in 2 Chronicles 7.14. You know what I found? Another one. Is, this is a really good one. Um, I started listening to classical music. Now, that sounds weird. Old hymns, old beautiful classical music um, from Chopin, from Bach. And actually, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach said, all music should be played to the glory of God. All music. Today, there's not music being played to the glory of God. There's trash out there. And I mean real trash. But when you start to listen to just the nice classical music, beautiful concerto music, piano, violin, whatever, that brings peace. That brings healing to the, to the, to the soul man. It really does. Try it. Just get a classical thing. I got Spotify, put it on, put it on my BO player. And as I'm studying or as I'm reading, or even when I'm praying, I just listen to nice soft classical music. And it does something to the soul. It really does. Especially the old hymns. Um, here's another one. Think of a place where you'd like to be. You know, I got this beautiful place, and I was there actually in, in Australia, in in uh, Port Macquarie, and uh, it's a gorgeous place. It's right on the beach. There's beautiful hills there, and palm trees and trees. It's magnificent. And, and I think about that place many times as I look at the photos, and I think, yeah, that's where I'd like to be. But at the moment now, I'm here, <laughs> so I'm I'm happy with where I am at the moment. Okay. Another one, the last one is here, is look after yourself each day. Now, we need to be a bit disciplined and regimental. I try to keep a, a regimen as I can every day. First thing I do is I wake up. I'm always in the Word and I pray. I exercise every morning. I do stretching. I'm out on a bike. I eat, try to eat healthy health food as I can. Um, uh, I don't like to eat rubbish. Um, I, at one stage, I, I cut out 95% of my sugar out of my, out of my diet all white breads and all the other stuff. And I'm starting to go back into it. I got into a bit of a rut, but I'm getting back into that. No more of this rubbish type of food. So look after yourself, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Feed it. The last one is in uh, Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses uh, 4 to 8, and I'm just going to condense this. It says, Rejoice always. Have no anxiety. Pray. Be thankful. Have, have, be, give thanksgiving that peace will come into your heart and your mind. And it says here, think on these things. What is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Now that's a challenge for you and me today. This is day one. We're going to go through 21 days of this challenge. And I believe after 21 days, if you've taken notes, and I'll try to get all these notes uploaded, You'll see what he will do, and you practice it throughout the day. And we're going to get on that in the next one, how we can practice this on a daily basis. And you'll see what he'll do for the spirit man, the soul man, for the physical man. Things will start to change in your life. Thanks for watching. 
Stay tuned for more. Tell others about us. Subscribe if you haven't. And share this video to others because I believe they'd be grateful. They'd be very grateful and, and helpful to their own lives. So stay blessed. Bye for now.